Hello friends, Namaskar. Budget 2022 has created a lot of hue and cry on taxation of cryptocurrency. So the question which is before the cryptocurrency investors is that okay, how this particular taxation is going to happen? What are the repercussions of the same? How the TDS applicability would take place? Where from these provisions would be applicable? What about the status prior to the date when this law will be applicable? So through this video, I am trying to attempt to provide some insights on this particular topic, which is really a very curious topic in terms of those who have either invested into cryptocurrency or who are thinking of investing into cryptocurrency. So I hope these inputs are going to be useful to you. So my dear friends, yet I have captioned this particular video as taxation of cryptocurrency through budget 2022. But the income tax law, the proposed amendment through budget 2022 does not specifically uses the term cryptocurrency. It uses the term virtual digital asset. So a question which comes before the investor is that, okay, let us know what is a virtual digital asset. Now let me explain this through the proposed definition of virtual digital asset why I am calling it proposed digital asset, mind you, my dear friend, the budget provisions are not final provision. They will become final when it will be approved by Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha and thereafter Honorable President. So the law will be final once it gets the assent of Honorable President. Now let me put up this definition of virtual digital asset for your understanding. The law says that what is virtual digital asset? It means any information or code or number or token not being Indian currency or foreign currency. Currencies are not forming part of virtual digital asset other than currency. So it should be an information code number or token which is generated through cryptographic means or otherwise. Now this then gives me that okay since say for example any cryptocurrency you name Bitcoin it is based on cryptographic means it is run on cryptographic platform if I am correct then it is a cryptocurrency and if it is a cryptocurrency or it is based on cryptographic means it should be treated to be virtual digital asset. So it appears that yes, the taxation of virtual digital asset includes the taxation of cryptographic currencies very specifically or otherwise by whatever name called providing a digital representation of value exchange with or without consideration with a promise or representation of having inherent value or functions as a store of value or a unit of account including its use in the financial transaction or investment but not limited to the investment scheme and can be transferred, stored or traded electronically. So naturally of course all these crypto platform things are taking place in terms of their transactions on an electronic platform. So this definition appears to be comprehensive. Further it also includes a non-fungible token NFTs. And we have seen recently few advertisement in newspaper, etc. These NFTs would also form part of virtual digital asset and would also include any other digital asset as the central government may by notification in official gazette is specified. So government by time to come may specify that okay to following categories also we list them out as virtual digital asset. Now continuing this definition further my dear friends, the Proposed law has a proviso in section 2 clause 47a which is the definition clause provided that central government may by notification in official gazette exclude any digital asset from the definition of virtual digital asset subject to such condition as may be specified therein. So government may put certain asset out of the category of this virtual digital asset even. So only the time will tell okay to what category they specifically cover air and to what category they want to exclude from this. Now let me put up before you that okay since we all have heard this thing that 30% tax rate would be there on these cryptocurrency transactions. Where from this rate is coming my dear friend? This is coming from this section which is proposed to be inserted by the budget that is section 115 double B H. Now let me put up this section before you for your understanding. This 115 double B at tax on income from virtual digital assets applicable with effect from 1st of April 2023. This is assessment year my dear friend 1st of April 2023 that is financial year 22-23. So don't get confused over there. 
with effect from 1st of april 2022 all the transactions are proposed to be covered under this regime where the total income of an sse includes any income from transfer of any virtual digital asset income tax shall be aggregate of income tax payable shall be aggregate of amount of income tax calculated on income from transfer of such virtual digital asset at the rate 30% and the amount of income tax with which assessee would have been chargeable had total income of assessee been reduced by the income referred to in clause a. so very specifically speaking say for example i have sold certain cryptocurrency for rupees 15 lakh i did purchase it for rupees 12 lakh so there is a difference of rupees 3 lakh which i earned only this 3 lakh rupees is subject to 30% now say for example apart from this 3 lakh i have 5 lakh rupees other income that 5 lakh rupees will be taxed at slab rate now you may ask me mr bhatia suppose if i have only 3 lakh rupees of income and no other income would i be entitled to get the benefit of basic exemption limit against that my answer to that my dear friends is no straight away whatever you earn you earn 10000 you pay 30% you earn 10 lakh you pay 30% without any basic exemption limit benefit as such. not only that some further uh, clarity is also provided rather that is a rigid provision of law that certain deductions would not be allowed against this particular income let me put up that thing also before you this is provided in the sense that there is a subsection 2 which says not as extending anything contained in any other provision of this act no deduction in respect of any expenditure other than cost of acquisition or allowance or set off of any loss shall be allowed to the assessee under any provision of this act in computing income referred to in clause a of subsection 1 means against this crypto based income you are not going to get get any deduction except only claiming cost of acquisition so cost of acquisition can be claimed but any other expense say for example you say i have borrowed certain funds through which i invested into cryptocurrency so interest amount is there let me claim that law unfortunately would not provide you for the same further it is said no set off of loss from transfer of the virtual digital asset computed under clause a of subsection 1 shall be allowed against the income computed under any other provision of this act to the assessee and such loss shall not be allowed to be carried forward to the succeeding assessment year meaning thereby that the loss from crypto transaction if any if you have profit you are supposed to pay 30% but if you have loss then in that case that loss would not be allowed to be set off against any other income and would also not be allowed to be carried forward at all so this appears that the government's initiative for the taxation of virtual digital asset or indirectly saying cryptocurrency is quite harsh it shows that there is a negative implication in the mind of the government regarding the taxation of virtual digital asset now let me explain further uh, then before you that if these are the crypto related taxation aspects then the government is also talking about tds applicability on transfer of virtual digital asset what is that in this regard my dear friend a new section section 194s is proposed to be introduced in the income tax act 1961 what are the tds consequences of it this 194s reads payment on transfer of virtual digital asset i read this for your reference this is again a proposed section any person responsible for paying to a resident any sum by way of consideration for transfer of virtual digital asset shall at the time of credit of such sum to the account of the resident or at the time of payment of such sum by any mode whichever is earlier deduct an amount equal to 1% of such sum as income tax thereon so say when i quoted i am selling 15 lakh rupees virtual digital assets say cryptocurrency bitcoin and then at the time of sale of this 15 lakh rupees say from anup bhatia to x person this x person is supposed to deduct 1% tds from me now one more question which you are supposed to understand is okay when tds will not apply because there is certain threshold up to which tds should not be applicable so let me explain that also for your reference there is subsection 2 and subsection 3 subsection 2 is basically exempting the person who is supposed to deduct the tds uh, from the person to whom he is paying certain amount in relation to in reference to the applicability of this particular cryptocurrency related payment subsection 3 says okay what is the threshold limit not this standing anything contained in subsection 1 no tax shall be deducted in a case where 
the consideration is payable by a specified person and the value or the aggregate of the value of such consideration does not exceed 50000 rupees during the financial year so if a specified person is paying to you the consideration then up to 50000 is not supposed to deduct tax at source the consideration is payable by any person other than a specified person so we need to understand okay who is a specified person i'll explain it. so if the consideration being paid to you by a specified person up to 50000 no tds would apply if the consideration being paid by a non specified person and the value or aggregate value of such consideration does not exceed 10000 then up to 10000 tds would not apply above that tds at the rate 1% would be applicable further who is a specified person you would be interested in knowing that for the purposes of this section specified person means a person being an individual or hf whose total sale gross receipt turnover from the business carried on by him or profession excise by him does not exceed 1 crore rupees in the case of business or 50 lakh rupees in the case of profession during the financial year immediately preceding financial year in which such virtual digital asset is transferred b being an individual hf not having any income under the head profits and gain of business profession so those individual hf who are not liable for tax audit and those individual and hf who are not having business income they are treated to be specified person when they are paying you then they will not be required to deduct tds up to 50000 but when any other person say a company or even an individual hf who is liable for tax audit if they are paying you then above 10000 they will start deducting tax at source so this is the tds related consequence of proposed amendment now a very important question which comes for the consideration of the investors okay sir what next and i can only say that future only has answer to these questions but i frame certain questions here for the understanding of public at large what are they they are in form of certain points one what will be the treatment of cryptocurrency transaction up to 31st of march 2022 since nothing is specifically provided so up to 31st of march 2022 the existing regime which is not specified in the law would continue and therefore i would say the income can be taxed as income from other source or income from business profession or income from capital gain even further i am here of suggesting that the people at large who are interested in crypto or already in crypto should think of waiting for the cryptocurrency and regulation of official digital currency bill 2021 this bill is very important sir it is not tabled as per my understanding as on the date of creation of this video so once this particular bill would be placed and which will be seen by lok sabha rajya sabha then would get the assent of honorable president then what kind of terminology is used here what kind of treatment is given to the cryptocurrency that is very important for an common investor to be thought about further we should also wait for indian digital currency to be launched because the government would frame the rules and the government would also try to tell us that okay how do we see indian digital currency as compared to other digital currencies or do they also cover it into this virtual digital asset category or not so that is also an interesting thing to be seen in near future my dear friends i know that this particular video alone is not sufficient to cover the whole gamut of the taxation of cryptocurrency because the cryptocurrency is a debate of the day and the time will tell okay where it go but one thing which i can do further for your basic understanding or for the enhancement of your knowledge i will also try to invite my expert friend on this that is on cryptocurrency ca mr tarun modi so shortly i'll try to bring a session with him joint session so that we can discuss more on how the cryptocurrency is going to do further in the understanding of a professional so thank you very much my dear friends for listening to me wishing you all the best jai hind